start of my PhD at Cambridge, I was absolutely terrified. Its reputation, history, and its genius academics are absolutely horrifying to think about. I'm hoping in this short talk I can outline what it's actually like to do a PhD at Cambridge, the demands of the role, what I do, the facilities that are available and the support that you get, and perhaps what's not necessarily unique about doing a PhD at Cambridge. So my name is Cameron Wilson and I'm doing a PhD at Cambridge in Public Health and Primary Care. And I'm doing my research as part of the Can Risk programme, whose main objective is to develop and validate breast and ovarian cancer risk prediction tools that take advantage of recent developments in genetics and epidemiology. So the tool has now been developed, so now we want to see what kind of improvements we can make in cancer risk prediction, how we can optimise these tools for clinical practice, and how we can operationalize these tools so that they work in primary care systems. So in other words, how we can implement personalized risk prediction that targets those that are most likely to benefit from it. So I've been doing a PhD at Cambridge for about two to three months now, so I've had a good chance to settle into my role, learn more about my team, and get stuck into various projects that will help in my development. And one of the key aspects that really surprised me about doing a PhD at Cambridge was the expectations that there were on you as a researcher. Obviously, at this stage in your academic career, you're not expected to know everything. I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with, but it's not necessarily something that's completely revolutionary or unknown beforehand. And the thing that's really surprised me at Cambridge so far was that my supervisors have been totally happy for me to take the freedom and the time to do anything that will help my research. So for example, my first main project is designing, developing, and then eventually delivering a validation study for the MyCan Risk tool. And this has required me to write a very, very, very thorough protocol, which has taken a lot of time and a lot of different versions, to read through existing study materials and familiarise myself with the contents that the team is producing. Now, this study is mainly quantitative, and I come from a qualitative background. So a lot of the concepts that I've been learning about are very foreign to me, and I don't understand a lot of them. One of those was Cohen's Kappa. And I was beginning to worry that I wasn't developing this protocol as fast as I'd like to and that my output was reduced. And I was getting really disheartened at the amount of comments that were being left on my work. And I got to a point where I expressed to my supervisors that I was feeling a little bit disheartened because I've been going through so many versions of this protocol and I'm struggling. And my supervisors were extremely supportive and expressed to me that a PhD is designed to be a learning opportunity. And one of the things that they told me was that if I wanted to spend a whole week not working on the protocol and just focusing on learning about Cohen's Kappa and then being able to come to the next meeting and be able to explain absolutely everything about it, that's no problem at all. And they're more than happy for me to take the time to do that. Now, I know this sort of thing is very contingent on your supervisors. You might not necessarily have supervisors that are like that and are really focused on output rather than the training and the learning. But at Cambridge, everyone that I've spoken to across all the colleges have shared similar experiences. And support is a really core part of Cambridge life, and it's something that's felt all across the university. Now, Cambridge is a collegiate university. For those of you that don't know what that is, you can think of it like Hogwarts from Harry Potter. You have all the houses, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, whereas at Cambridge, you have colleges. So you have, say, Pembroke College, which is where I'm based, you have King's College, Trinity College, and Queen's College, for example. And these colleges are designed to be an extra layer of support. So in your colleges, you'll have things like your academic tutor, which is not your supervisors, but this external source outside of your main field of study that you can consult if you've got any issues with your supervisors, your field of research, or any concerns in your personal life, and they are able to give you the support and directions to support that you might need. And as part of your college, you also have additional facilities that are made available to you. So for example, at Pembroke, there is the Pembroke specific library, extra study rooms, the auditoriums, which are free to use for anyone specifically in your college. And some colleges are more well equipped to deal with certain subjects. So some colleges might be say more tailored towards engineering or medicine. It varies from college to college. And additionally, there's also things like leisure rooms. So for example, there's a ping pong room downstairs, which is really handy and I go and spend a lot of my time at. There's also the graduates parlor where all the postgraduates can all come together, share their stories, hang out and spend time together. So it's a really good family sort of feel at all these colleges. 
Then on top of that, you also have the Postgraduate Researcher Development Programme that Cambridge offers, which is basically a range of different talks, training programmes that you can get involved in. So one of the things that I've been trying to do is make the time each week to attend at least one talk or training course so that I can either learn a new concept or refresh my memory of something that I've learned before. And again, my supervisors are really happy to give me the freedom to do this. Now these things might not necessarily be totally unique to Cambridge, as a lot of universities tend to offer these sorts of programmes, but having that extra layer of support and freedom is really important for a developing researcher. And that sort of brings me to my final point. While all these experiences and support that you get at Cambridge are fantastic, they're not necessarily unique to Cambridge, and a lot of other universities employ systems like this. So a PhD student is an independent researcher in training you will have lots of time and lots of freedom to be left to your own devices a lot of the time. And this is generally applicable to any university that you do your PhD at. Although the specific examples that I've given are largely driven by the support that my supervisors give, and that will depend on what you get at your university. And naturally, training courses will generally be offered at every university that you do a PhD at. And the quality of the research that is produced will of course vary from university to university, but ultimately, university status does not determine the quality of your research output. That is dependent on you as a researcher. So if you're willing to push yourself to take additional training courses, challenge yourself in writing, and taking advantage of tools that are made available to you in this period of your development, then you're bound to flourish, regardless of what university that you're attending. So I'd like to thank you massively for watching this short talk about my experiences of Cambridge and what I think makes it unique or perhaps not so unique. I also hope that it's potentially validated some feelings that people are having at the start of their PhD or perhaps given some insights as to people that are interested in doing a PhD as to what it's actually like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the PhD Place YouTube channel because they produce some really fantastic content for some brilliant researchers across all sorts of fields. And if you're interested in hearing more from me, then I also have my own YouTube channel, which I talk about more experiences about PhD life. And I also have all my social media channels, which will be all linked below. So thanks again for listening to my talk and I hope you have a great day and good luck. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more academia related content, then please subscribe to the PhD Place YouTube channel.